You know, ever since the authorities caught me combing through Rick Beato's trash, I've been able to convince people that I've been on a quest for the holy grail of music theory, and now I think I've actually found it. It is this decoder circle of fifths wheel, all right? I've always said that the circle of fifths is probably like the most important thing to really fully comprehend, but it's a very confusing thing to actually teach because there's a lot of different moving parts at the same time. So uh, what we're gonna talk about this noisy clan uh, decoder that they sent over and how the circle of fifths can help you just become a better musician and some cool things you can do with it, all right? So right now we are on G, the key of the people. The people's key is G, all right? So let's just talk about this information, how you can use it. So we start off with just the, the parent key of everything right up top, okay? And we can just rotate everything just by flipping it like this, right? Let's go back to the people's key. So basically what it does is it shows you all the notes in this key, okay? So you'll see that it's numbered one, four, five, seven, six, two, three. All right, and this is why it's kind of hard to really explain the circle of fifths in a very cohesive way because you almost kind of have to explain the numbers of a scale out of order to really grasp it, right? Uh, if you know anything about the key of G, you know, it's just G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, right? Those are the notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one. And one thing that I've done a lot of videos on are just like turning the, the notes of a key into the chords of a key because that makes things musical. So the one note in G, the one chord is G major. The two chord is A, A minor, three is B minor, four is C major, five is D, ma D major, six is E minor, seven is F sharp diminished, and then back to home. Okay, so the way that this helps us out is it puts the parent key right on top, and then it has the major chords right next to it, okay? So C and D. So G, C, and D are the one, four, five in the key of G, right? One, four, and five. Now the minor chords are gonna be at the bottom here, right? You see three, six, and two, B minor, E minor, A minor. B minor, E minor, a minor. And you'll also notice that the six right there is in the middle. It has a little extra importance because that's the relative minor. That's where like the minor pentatonic scale would be, right? It's kind of like the, uh, the buddy cap system. G major goes with E minor. And then right in the middle, it has F sharp, which is the seventh note, and that's where that diminished chord is, right? So you get a really quick, easy visual about all the main chords in a key, but it actually does more than that. It'll tell you the notes that go into it. So the cool thing here is like you see here, right under the parent key, it shows you which notes are sharp or which no notes are flat, which we'll see in another key. But after the number that it's on, it'll tell you the numbers that make up the chord tones in the actual chord. So like if you go to C, you see it's the four, and then it also has a four and a six and a one. That means it has uh, a C major is the fourth note in this key, the sixth note and the first note. So that would be in the key of G, the fourth note, G, A, B, C. C is the first note, obviously. And then G, A, B, C, D, E. There's an E, C, E, and G, one, right? So it kind of spells out the chord for you also. One, three, five, relative to its own key, which we could go to, right? See, we just flip that, and now we're in the key of C, and then it'll say that, like, look, there's no, there's no sharps or flats in the key of C, and then now it gives you one, three, five in this key, but all the notes have rotated into the right spot, and that is such an important concept to grasp. And the next thing that I wanna talk about is if you go back to the key of G, right? You'll notice that there are these two kind of out of focus things. This is my favorite thing about this wheel. You'll see that F and A are right there. You can still see them, but you can't see them as clearly. And that's because these are chords and notes that kind of work, right? So in the key of G, F, is not in the key, but we can kind of make it in the key, right? There's a lot of songs that have a flat seven major chord in them because, you know, that's a chord that kind of works, right? I'll play a chord progression in the key of G. Let's take, uh, let's take a one, six, three chord progression. So G major, E minor, B minor, G major, E minor, B minor, G. 
Okay? Well, let's just try to like shoehorn an F major chord in there. Like, it didn't sound bad, right? It's technically not in the key, but that's the coolest thing about this because those are such underrated slept on chords for things that you might want to use. The same thing with the A. Now again, A is in this key, but usually it's a minor chord as we can kind of see right there, right? A minor. But you can use it as an A major chord, thus being a secondary dominant. So it's a very clever way of kind of showing you where the other potential major chords or like, you know, secondary dominants are in a key. And then just kind of like, having those be options. So you're never stuck, you can always venture out into other keys, because as we kind of make a move, you see that those become a little closer to what you want to do. So let's actually spend some time in the key of D here, right? And let's just read the, the chart here. So the one chord is D major, the four chord is G major, and the five chord is A major. So D major, G major, A major, D. Okay, and then three, six, and two would be F sharp minor, B minor, E minor. Let me let me line this up a little better. F sharp minor, B minor, E minor, right? F sharp minor, B minor, E minor. So let's use what we what we have here to try to make an interesting chord progression. I can pick any of these chords, and I want to throw I want to throw this. C major in also, all right? So I'll start with D. One, B minor, A major, C major. And that's like, it's such a interesting thing, but it doesn't sound so familiar. And that's what's really important about this is it kind of gets you used to the idea of having that flat seven major chord, or using the other one, E, specifically maybe as an E7, to be a secondary dominant that you know leads us somewhere else. So let's do the same thing, but let's use E as a seven chord and do this too, right? So we got D major, D minor, A, seven a and that's a great example of uh, e having just that extra note in there secondary dominant to lead us to a and then to d okay and that's kind of like a great example of what maybe like a two five one would be. And again, 251 is probably a term that you've heard of. Maybe you don't never really, you know, took the time to understand it. This is a great way to kind of just see exactly what that is. Well, what's the two? The two is going to be E, the five is going to be A, and then the one is going to be D. So without having to really know all the music theory, having this decoded for you is super, super helpful. I could be like, all right, 251, E, uh, E, A, D. And again, you can play E minor. A major, D major, or you can do it as a secondary dominant, E7, A7, D. But then it's like, what if we want to turn D into the five chord to kind of continue on? Well, let's just make D go to the five chord. So I can just push this over here. And then by turning D into a seven chord, now we open up all the notes and chords in the key of G. So anytime you want to turn any chord into a dominant seven chord, even if it's just like something totally wild, like let's say, uh, let's say I'm in the people's key and I want to do something really weird. Let's say I want to add like an E flat seven chord to take me somewhere else, right? Maybe I kind of like the sound of that or it's like G, C, I got a one, four, five thing I'm working on, right? Now I go to the six chord. And then maybe just by, you know, experimenting, I got to that E flat, which is the sixth fret on the A string, and put that on a, it's like, ah, oh, 
you know, my, my ear was leading me this way. I thought that was cool. You know, one, four, five, six. And it's like, all right, well, now I'm out of the key. Now I'm kind of all out of sorts. All I have to do is keep going until I get that E flat in that five spot. Now it might take me a minute because it's like, ah, where is it? Still going, still, oh, look at that. D flat, oh, nope. A flat, E flat, okay? So now if that's the five chord, I don't know anything else about what I'm doing, but maybe that's gonna lead me to A flat. It's like, oh, this is a great idea. Now I can do this, and I can do F minor. It's like, all right, so let's use that in practice. I started with this G, then C, D, then E minor, back it up, and that led me to here. And it's like, I may have never played in the key of a flat before in my life, or G sharp or whatever. In fact, there is a, it's, let, let, let's talk about the one sharp that comes in here. The, uh, the dreaded, keep it going, keep it going, we're gonna get there eventually, the dreaded G flat slash F sharp, however you perceive the key to be. It even gives you two options for how many sharps are in it or how many flats are in it. And again, just like a really, really cool, well thought out device. So I actually saw this at NAMM uh, last time around, and I was just very impressed by uh, the whole Noisy Clan booth. They had like the coolest uh, products. They had like really creative ways of just using paper in a not wasteful way. And I think that's why this really caught my eye and I started talking to the guy, super cool guy. And uh, yeah, he sent one over and sponsored a video. And if you guys are interested in this, you can use my code in the description to get 20% off of it. It's, a, it's an affiliate link, so yeah. I think it's just an awesome thing to have around, awesome gift to give another musician. And uh, if you look at it, it's cool. It's got these little snaps on the back, so it kind of comes with like a little stand. Again, super, super creative way to do it. I was just kind of perching it on the back here and then just standing it up just like that so it's not laying flat down, but uh, yeah, anyways, I think this is like just like a really cool kind of device. There's a couple different iterations you can get with it. Uh, one of them has like a more robust, just kind of music theory helper booklet and stuff to you. But again, I think something like this is just really cool and handy because it makes you kind of see everything and how it, how music changes and essentially ensures that you'll never run out of like just cool ideas to do things with. So thank you again to Noisy Clan for sponsor, sponsoring this video, sending this over. And uh, like I said, there is a 20% off discount if you use my affiliate code. So yeah, feel free to, uh, you know, just use the circle of fifths in like a, in a fun, creative way. Because once you start using this, or just kind of thinking in, in these terms, you'll be able to do this in your head, right? And you know, I, I feel like I have a pretty, a pretty good working understanding of music theory. But even for me, it's like just seeing it and seeing everything laid out, especially with like the secondary dominance and stuff. It's like, oh, this could really, this is like a really helpful thing <laughs> that is better than relying on going into my mind's eye and stuff. So again, really cool gift. And thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.